All right, so, so far we have created, uh, we've learned how to get the user data using the post variable. So now what we're going to do here is to create a class that we can use to check if the user has given us the correct information. So let's go to our working folder, go to classes, in fact, I want to open this uh, connect DB and just remove this DB is equal to new database because I think it's it's better to instantiate or create the, the connection uh, when we need to use it. So in here, what I want though is to create a new file. I'm going to call this file and save. I, this is going to be another class. I'm going to call it signup. So this is the signup class. It's going to contain the signup class. So signup.php. So not to be confused by the other one. So signup here has, uh, so there are two signup files, one inside classes and one signup here. So now we want the class version here and let's create a class. So here we have to create the PHP tags. So let me zoom this in a bit. And then we're going to say class, let's use a capital letter, sign up. Okay. So in here, we're going to create a couple of functions. The first function uh, is going to be the one that evaluates the data. And then the second function is going to be the, the function that uh, saves uh, create user. So we're going to use, we're going to say that create user. Now, if you had noticed previously, I was using private or public inside classes. So here, since these functions are going to be accessed from outside, I want to call them public like that. It's good practice to type like this. If you don't mention public, they're going to be public by default, but it's good to add it there so that you also know what they are. So here we're going to create another, uh, we're going to create a private, uh, this is going to be a private uh, variable called error. So this is just in case there's an error, we can return this error. Uh, I think I'm just going to call it false for now. Oh, that was fine. Even just an empty string is fine. So this is private because it's going to be accessed by functions in here only. I think this is enough for our class. Now let's do something. Evaluate. Now to evaluate, we need something to evaluate. So we're going to ask the whatever, whoever is calling this function to supply some data in here for us to uh, evaluate. So let's call this data in here, whatever we'll be evaluating. Even when creating a user, we need to be able to create a user using some data. So let's add another one called data in there. Okay. Now we know that this data is going to come in as an array because this post right here is an array. So that's the data from the user that we're going to be sending through here. So this will be an array. Now there are several loops, like I had said during the lesson for loops, there's the while loop, and then there's the for loop, and then there's one for code for each. Now in here, I'm going to use the for each loop. So let me explain what for each is. So here where it says variable, I'm going to put data because this is my, uh, my, uh, my, my array, sorry. So for each, what for each does is that it goes through each item in the array one at a time and shows me its key and its value. So if you had noticed uh, previously when I showed you this, for example, in this case where there's gender here, gender is the key, this is the value. So first name is the key, the value is empty. That's the key and the... So here, this for each loop 
each time it loops it gives me one one key and one value so in our case it's going to start with this one and go to this one and then show me this one and so on until it gets to the end then it's going to stop so this is a good way to go through an array is to use the for each loop so once we go through we have to check for each one of these uh, some parameters so at this point whatever value is being checked will be key and value so we're going to be using these variables value and key so let's make sure that the value is not empty so let's check and say if value if empty there's a function which comes with php called empty and then it takes in a value so if the value is empty let's show an error so we're going to say we're going to add an error here okay so we're going to say error dot equals like that now dot equals is the same as saying error is equal to error dot like that uh, and then we put a message here now the reason we're putting a dot is because in case there was already an error in here that we had put from previously we just want to add to the error so that's why we are concatenating like this so error is equal to error and whatever that is now instead of doing this we can simply say error dot equals is the same as what i just did it's the same as saying error is equal to error and something else so when you see dot equals it means we are adding to the end of the string or the sentence so I'm going to say dot error is equal to now we're going to say we're going to tell them that this key whatever it is in this case will be first name we're going to say whatever the key is is empty so we'll tell them that so to do that we're going to say key because we don't know what key this is because it's going to be going through all the keys one at a time so whatever this key is We'll say key dot is empty so this is the error and then we put a break tag so that the errors will be on separate lines okay we can remove that slash like that so this is what it is so i don't know if this is going to work well but for for visibility let me remove this and just show you properly like this so we're going to say error is error is equal to whatever is inside error and then add the key because whatever will be inside error there will be a break tag if for example error right now is empty so what's going to happen is it will be an empty string plus the key and then it's going to say let's say the key is first name it's going to say first name is empty which is an error okay so the next time if it goes through all of them and finds that it's empty it's going to do that now if it's not empty i'm just going to say uh, so it goes through here and checks all the errors all right now once it's done here if there are no errors this is the only time we should continue to create a user so we can't allow any errors to go by so after we pass through here when we get to the end here we check if error is empty so to do that if error is equal to empty like that because originally it's empty so if it's empty then let's continue if it's not which is else then we return the error okay whatever error is here we return to this part so we can show the user what the error is but if there's no error here let's put a comment here let me do this uh, save or let me just say no error it's good to put comments i've been forgetting to put comments all this time so bear with me all right so once we reach here then let's create a user so we put this one here and call this function so we are calling this function now we know how to call a function here we use the this because the function is inside 
the same uh, class. So we say this create user with data. So the same data that we got from there. Okay, so if the data is fine, we use it there. So let me put a semicolon there. And then what's happening is that from here, it's going to call this function, which will save. If there were some errors, this function will not be called, nothing will be saved. Okay. And then down here at the end, this is where we create. So what we're going to do is we're going to need that database uh, thing. So we're going to say db is equal to new database class database. like that. So here we are calling the database class from inside another class. So db is equals new db. And then as we remember, db, uh, we, we're supposed to save. There's save and there's read. So we want to use the save. Mm -hmm. So in here, we're supposed to put a query, as we remember. So let's create the query right here. Now to create this query, we are going to do this. We'll go back to our database to make sure we have all the uh, required. Let me go down here. We select all the required columns here. So we need a user ID, we need a first name, gender, and so on. So all that is going to come from this uh, it's going to come from this data. So data has been passed in here. So let's create our query. So we're going to say query is equal to, we are inserting a new record. So we say insert into users. And then as you remember, we have this and then we have values, something like that. This is how you insert uh, things in there. So the first thing we need is a user ID. That's the column. We put the columns there. User ID, first name, first name has an underscore there, and then the last name, and then gender, and then what else do we need here? We need the email, the password, email, password, and what else do we need? The URL address. Okay. And so we're going to create all these variables here from that data. So these will be the same values in the variables. So let me put them there. So we are not saving, uh, we're not, ID will be done by the database itself and date will be done by the database itself. So that's why we're not worrying about those. So as we did earlier, if I select these just at the beginning there, I can put all the dollar signs because all variables should have a dollar sign. And then if I select, I can put inverted commas like that because what we'll be putting here is text. Well, most of it except the user ID, but the rest of it will be text. And let me go here. Okay. So now what we need here is, I can actually uh, put this separate like this so you see it better. Since it's one string, it's still going to work. It opens there and ends there, okay? So now at this point, before we save, we can simply check to see if the query is fine and then that's when we save. So in order for us to use these variables, we need to have them. So let's get them from this data. So what we would do is we're going to say, first name is equal to data, first name. Because remember, this data variable is the same as this post variable. So it contains this data, uh, where is that data? Oh, okay, we no longer have it, but it contains the data from the user, from post. So this one, 
and then let me change this to last name that one also last and then let's do one for gender What else do we need? Email, password. So let me just duplicate these. Email. And then this one, I'm using Control D to select the next one. Password. This is faster. And then we have one for URL address. Okay. Now what we need here is because inside actually the post we don't have url address and we don't have user id so we need one more here for user id let me just change this so the user is not going to enter the user id these are supposed to be created by uh, php create these so in order to do this we can create two functions that are doing exactly that 